I don't know if you guys caught Hugh Jackman's wonderful tribute to understudies and swings and the big controversy of the Broadway League president's statement. With all of these things going on, I thought it would be a great time to talk about alternates, understudies, swings, and covers. Hi everyone, if you're new here, my name is Jillian and I am a professional musical theater actor and a host in the Philippines and I make videos on performance life and beauty as well as some young Tita things. While the majority of press is majored around the leads or you know the big stars in a show, little is said about the hardest working members of the cast and I am talking about the understudies, alternates, swings, and covers. Don't forget the standbys. Before we go on, I'm just going to discuss the term that I'm going to be talking about for the rest of the video, which is the word track. A track is your specific role in the show. My choreography, my blocking, my vocal line, prop placement, backstage traffic. So basically, it's where I go, what to do, where I enter, where I exit. That's your track. So you have to learn that whole thing. Now that that's out of the way, let's differentiate first the difference. I know this is very confusing because I also had a hard time comprehending all of this. These are the differences between all of these important roles on and off stage. First, we have an alternate. When roles are super demanding, like let's say lead roles, or maybe played by kids or teens, usually they are split in between two to three people. So basically, they have guaranteed shows. Now, when let's say an emergency happens or like let's say the lead or someone in the support can't make it to the show for some reason, like got injured or they're sick, they may be on leave. That's when the understudies, swings, and standbys come in. The lead usually has an understudy. So an understudy is usually someone from the ensemble. They have their own ensemble track. But in the event that the lead or the support can't do the show, the understudy will step in. That means while they are learning their ensemble track, they're also learning a different track in the show. The thing about being an understudy is your shows are not guaranteed. So now that the understudy is taking on a principal role or a support role, that leaves a little hole in the ensemble. That's when the swing comes in. A swing is an offstage performer that learns multiple tracks in the ensemble. Again, when emergencies happen, they have to be ready to step in at any given moment. Middle of the show, in between acts, when, God forbid, accidents happen. This is the hardest role in any production. So let's go on to the word cover. This is largely used in the West End and they have what you call a first cover, second cover. The first cover is usually the first person that you call on to cover a role. If that person can't go on, second cover is the person who is next in line. And believe it or not guys, for example, for dance heavy shows like let's say Mamma Mia, they even utilize third covers in the company. Now we have understudy, swing, cover, ooh, standbys. Not all shows have a standby. This is again used for super demanding roles. For example, Elphaba, Kim in Miss Saigon. Those vocally and physically challenging roles, they usually have what you call a standby. A standby is an off-stage performer whose sole responsibility is to learn the lead part. They're not a part of the ensemble, not a swing. Their only assignment is to learn the lead's track. Basically, they're called a standby because every show, they're there just waiting backstage just in case something happens. You're paid to learn the role and to rehearse. So for this one, you don't have a guaranteed set of shows as well. So all of these people that I just mentioned, they are super duper awesome because they are constantly sharpening their skills and getting ready backstage without, most of the time, a guarantee of stepping on that stage. If that's 
not dedication, I don't know what is. They need to have awesome brain power and they're able to absorb a lot of information fast and they're able to execute it really well. In the Philippines, we have an abundance. We have an abundance of great understudies and slaves. I truly, truly look up to them and I deem being one as a huge responsibility and a great learning experience for absolutely anyone. It's also a huge cause of stress based on my experience. Nothing can get my blood pumping. The way going on as an understudy does absolutely nothing comes close. Story time of the times that I went on as an understudy or a swing. So in 2016, that was my first show with Repertory Philippines, and it was the season when we were doing Hansel and Gretel and A Little Princess. I would be doing Hansel and Gretel in the weekdays, and then in the weekends, it would be the big show, which is A Little Princess. I don't know how I survived it as a newbie, actually. In Hansel and Gretel, I was a cover for Gretel. Yes, a child. I was a cover for a child. During those rehearsals, I was also kind of like the uh, ate to all of the kids where I'd help them with their choreography and their acting. And so it was kind of like I had to help them along the way. But I never went on. In the middle of our run, children's theater is usually five to six months. People just started getting sick or, you know, like not being able to do the shows. I wasn't assigned as a swing, but midway towards the run, I sort of had to learn how to do it like on the spot because I had to fill in for a lot of people. I think I've done four different tracks. There was also a support role called the Dawn Fairy. I was a cover. There was one day where absolutely no one was available to do it, so they were like, you're doing it. I don't ever remember getting like a full rehearsal run. Maybe for Gretel, I did. The Ensemble and the Dawn Fairy speed runs, just trying to go through the blocking and the choreography literally the day of the show. For A Little Princess, the leads and the supports had alternates because mostly, again, kids. I had guaranteed shows along with my alternate Gabby. We were able to have the the, the whole thing. We also had Beauty and the Beast, the Samuel French version. So my main role was Sister Mimi, and then I was understudying Beauty, but I was also doing some swing work for the ensemble. When the time came that, that I had to do Beauty, I was lucky enough to do an understudy run with all of the other understudies and swings. I did go on as Beauty a couple of times. I never got to do ensemble. We also did Quest for the Adarna, so my main role was Maria Blanca, but I was also asked to learn some of the ensemble traps. Also did a show with Ephesus called Once Upon a Mattress, and I was mostly ensemble, but I was understudying Lady Larkin, so that was Yana Laurel. And I was guaranteed a show as an understudy. During the rehearsals, I would just mirror at the back. We were able to do a speed run a day before I was going to go on as Lady Larkin. For Akuling El Bimbo, the ensemble track was pretty heavy. I was the understudy for the role of Joy. It was a lot mentally and vocally. I was learning the show as we went along. We didn't get any understudy runs, but my fellow understudies and I, so Sila Vic, I think Reb, we would be mirroring while a rehearsal was going on, taking down notes. And we would practice, let's say, on break or we'd come in early. I never went on, but we are paid to learn and understudy. This wasn't a musical theater show. It was for Rep 50th. It was a big show and you know, I was just doing some singing, tech run, and then the next day is the show. A few hours before tech run, they're paging me on stage. They're like, can Jillian Itas please come to main stage? So I was in the dressing room and then I was like, oh, they're probably gonna make me like ghost sing in some other parts of the concert. Much to my surprise, they were like, you're singing with Monique Wilson in a duet and it's this song. I never heard that song less than a day before the actual show. So I was like, I was able to do it without, you know, dying from anxiety and stress. So, so anyway, those were my experiences when it comes to understudying 
and doing swing work and filling in for people. In theory, it sounds really exciting and fun, but it's a lot of responsibility and a lot of pressure and it takes up a lot of your brain space and a few years off your life from the stress. So the only way to do it is learn when to be calm, be over-prepared instead of being under-prepared. Anyway, the point of this video is to shed more light on, again, the hardest working people in the theater industry. Right now on Broadway and the West End, the understudies and swings are totally doing an amazing job of keeping all of these shows afloat. Here in the Philippines, understudies and swings, I think, should also be the norm for future productions, seeing as this pandemic may have long-term effects on how productions are mounted. This also being said, proper compensation and support from the company should be given to understudies and swings. So any thoughts on this or if you guys were understudies or swings or standbys as well, drop your stories in the comments below. Drop your comments. I would love to hear them spark some conversation about this very interesting topic. I hope that you guys found this video educational and entertaining. I will be posting, as promised, more performance life videos on my channel. So if you love those things, I would love it if you guys would hit follow or subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And as always, keep safe you guys, follow your passions, and see you in the next video. Bye!